At the moment you see the Earth from space, if you can begin to move off your home planet, the possibilities are infinite. If money was no object, uh, what could we be doing to advance our knowledge of space and the cosmos that we're currently not? I would love to see an international mission to Mars, and truly international as well. So the big space agencies, so yep. China, um, US, Europe, India now, mm. yeah, I would like to see that. Chinese have been, I guess, behind the space race for a while, but would you consider them now a, a superpower? Yes, definitely. Um, because there's the ambition, and there's the investment, and there's the technological know-how. Mm. Um, so China give the impression to me of being able to essentially do anything that the, 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 the country wants because it's got the resources, it's got the intellectual power mm. to do it. But what challenges does China being a superpower prove to other nations? China's not allowed on the International Space Station, so there seem, is there tension already there? Can there be collaboration? Well, yeah, and that, that's, that would be the goal. Ultimately, Carl Sagan, again, my great hero, said that uh, astronomy is a humbling and character building experience mm. because it, it demonstrates, it, 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 you can't do astronomy without seeing the Earth as one world. To me, what, as I mentioned before, one of the things that certainly Richard Branson puts this centre stage, the, the, the moment you see the Earth from space, you realise that the only way we're going to become a truly spacefaring civilization, which means a civilization that becomes effectively immortal, right? If, if you can become, if you can begin to move off your home planet, then you, you yeah, you, you, the possibilities are infinite. Mm. But you've got to do it. And the way you do it is by collaborating. So I think that's, for me, the, the would be the ultimate goal. I would love to see a, an international mission with China and the US and Russia and the Europeans uh, and India actually going to Mars because it would be a unifying force. Mm. So you're bringing your Universal live show here to Hong Kong in June. Why is it important for you to bring that to, to Asia? Is, is it about inspiring? Yes, and it's about ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's basically, at one level, it's about cosmology. Mm -hmm. So it's about what we know about the origin and evolution of the universe. But uh, you cannot do cosmology, first of all, without it being terrifying <laughs> in, in the strictest <laughs> sense of the word, because you know, I mean, for example, we, we are one planet around one star amongst 200 billion stars in one island of stars called the Milky Way. The current number of galaxies in the observable universe is something like two trillion. Mm -hmm. So that's two trillion galaxies in the bit we can see. We're very sure that the universe extends beyond the bit we can see, mm. maybe infinite in extent. And now we have theories that possibly, theories called eternal inflation, which possibly that, that universe even if it's infinite, might be one of uh, an infinite number of other bubble universes. Wow. So that, that, that raises very profound and challenging questions, I mm. think, about um, our place. So what is our place? Uh, what, what, is, what does it mean to be human? That, that is a, a, a question which, at first sight, does not seem to fall within the domain of science. Mm. But this show argues that if you're going to even try and answer such questions, which are personal questions that we all ask, then you need to know. You need to know where we are and when we are and how we came to be here. I'd like to know, what would you say to people who, the average Joe that does believe in science but is, um, sees all these people with such loud voices saying that what they believe in is wrong? What would you say to them to, to give them hope? The number one piece of advice I would give is you have to practice, as Richard Feynman and, and Oppenheimer said, you have to practice celebrating being wrong because you learn, and, and really what, what's your goal? Is your goal to appear to be right, or is your goal to learn more? And if your goal is to learn more, that's what I would say, make your goal to learn more, mm -hmm. rather than be seen to be right. That, that would be my <laughs> single that's piece of advice. <laughs> that's a great piece of advice. Professor Brian Cox, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been fascinating. Oh, thank you.